a lot of pressure to do well. Uh, I think especially after the awards and everything. But um, I think it's going to be a really exciting challenge and I'm really looking forward to it. Tell us a little bit about uh, the makeup of the team. Well, it's um, selected from all around the country. So it's not just the Alchemy Dojang. We're just one of the schools from Johannesburg. We've got representatives from Mpumalanga, from Aliwal North, from Bloemfontein, and from all over the rest of South Africa as well. They've competed in selection championships last year, and then our South African championships this year, and then even at events like the Arnold Classic and different things like that that we've been competing to get the team together. So it's quite a, quite a diverse team from all over the country. And how long have you been preparing for these World Championships now, Tanita? Uh, well, I guess since I was chosen for the team, I've been uh, mentally preparing as well as physically preparing. And what does it take to get ready for a World Championships of this nature? Um, a lot of practicing, a lot of training to get fit, and also uh, a lot of mental preparation. But I think that comes after you feel physically prepared. It helps with the mental preparation because you are, you're performing your martial art. You're performing what you've been practicing for months. So it is, you have to be able to overcome the nerves. So that's where the mental preparation comes in. Well, what's going to be the biggest challenge for you come London? Um, I think it will actually be the nerves, actually. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, even though, it, I mean, it is part of preparing. Um, but I think if I prepare as well as I should, then I should be, I should be fine. But you've won three gold medals at a international competition before at the World Martial Arts Games. What makes this one different? Uh, I think in martial arts, um, the higher you get, the higher ranking you are the more pressure there is on you to do well. So the World Martial Arts Games was in 2016. So two years down the line, I'm higher ranked in the Tang Soo Do community, which means a lot more is expected of me to do well. So that's, that's the main difference, I think. And I think a lot of the youngsters are also looking up to Taneta to see just how well she does, isn't it, Greg? That's exactly right. And uh, what she, just to expand on what she says, you're kind of preparing for three different disciplines. So she'll be preparing a forms routine, which is empty hand, which is quite acrobatic. So there you're kind of preparing like a dancer to perform your routine and make it entertaining and powerful. And then she'll be doing a weapons routine, probably two or three different weapons. So it's almost like rhythmic gymnastics where you've got to master the weapon and show the martial arts application. And then, of course, the third thing that she's going to be doing is, is the fighting, the points fighting competition. So it's kind of a little bit uh, of a diverse kind of preparation that she has to do because she has to do the forms, the weapons, and also fight. So all of those different disciplines have their different challenges. And so like she says, preparing is a lot of uh, technical training in the weapons and in the empty hand uh, format, and then a lot of mental, mental and physical preparation to get fit for the fighting, which I think is going to be one of your challenges. Huh? Yes. She enjoys it. But. When you tell uh, just you know, average people on the street that maybe aren't exposed to Tang Sudo. You know, I am leading Team South Africa, we're going to World Championships, uh, maybe Karate or Kung Fu will be the first thing that actually comes to mind. So just explain to us what Tang Sudo actually is. When, um, in, the, in the history of it is a bit that Korea was sort of occupied by Japan for a long time, up until the end of the Second World War. So Tang Sudo is sort of Korean Karate but it has a uniquely Korean flavor. So a lot of the Taekwondo type kicks and uh, punches and strikes come in, and then a lot of sort of Okinawan weapons training. So Tang Sudo sort of burst onto the international scene at the end of the Korean War, where a lot of GIs like Chuck Norris, you might have heard of him, yeah. <laughs> okay, and others brought Tang Sudo back to America. So they invited a lot of the GIs that they'd been training with in Korea, the Korean masters where they'd learned their Tang Sudo to come to America. And from there, it spread throughout the whole world. So that's how Tang Soo Do got its introduction. So a lot of that fighting that we see in the movies, that's actually Tang Soo Do. Absolutely. From best of the best to, yeah, Walker, Texas Ranger, it's actually Tang Soo Do. Wow. Is that what got you uh, interested in it, Tanita? Um, no, it wasn't. <laughs> I think for me, it was more of the um, self-defense aspect. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that, uh, the draw card for you. Um, well, I'm... A student at WITS, and WITS has, there's a branch of alchemy at WITS, um, so that's where I started training. Um, I've been wanting to learn how to fight, just mainly as a 
self-defense thing, but also just because it makes you really fit and really strong. Um, so when I found out that there's a martial art at WITS, I just joined and pretty much fell in love with it from there. And how long have you been doing this for now? I started in 2015, so this yeah. is my fourth year. It's quite incredible how much Tanisa has actually managed to achieve after having you know, picked up the sport less than four years ago. Yeah, and uh, it is very interesting because, like she said, most people start uh, a martial art, which isn't really a sport. There is a sport aspect to it, but it's more complex than that. They start it for those reasons, for empowerment, for self-defense, that kind of thing, and then end up getting involved in the sport side of things and falling in love with it like Tanita did, and performing. And yeah, she's just taken it to it like a duck to water, so she's uh, excelled very quickly. I mentioned that the karate, karate will be at uh, the Olympics, which was uh, a huge boost uh, for that yeah, sport. That's great, yeah. uh, how easy is it to transition between different martial arts? We do do uh, sort of multidisciplinary um, competitions. The National Federation that's affiliated to SASCOC is actually Martial Arts South Africa. And I'm the General Secretary of Martial Arts South Africa. And we have about uh, 17 different styles of martial arts that form part of our federation. And we compete at multidisciplinary uh, events like the Arnold Classic Africa. Uh, and there you will be competing against kickboxers, against taekwondo, tang sudo. You'll be competing against some um, karateka as well that come to our different events. And those are really fun events because we have to use a generic set of rules, but the points fighting rules are kind of similar across the different styles. So it's quite nice to see the adaption and see the different competition that we have between the styles. And South Africans are fantastic at all sorts of sports, and the martial arts are no different. Very, very tough competition. Greg, we've got to wrap it up, but I just want to know, Tanita, how many gold medals are we expecting at Worlds and how many gold medals are from the South African team? Tanita? Uh, ideally, I'd like all of them. <laughs> so that's what I'm striving for. Well, we're taking a, a large team. We're taking sort of the national team, a junior national team, and a, a big president's team, which is our development team. And we're expecting quite a few gold medals. I would say 20 or 30 gold medals. Okay, we're out of here. Stand